Hello, my name is Xiang Kim from Korea University Global Hospital. We are delighted to present this study to the readers of KJR. The title is A Nomogram Using Imaging Features to Predict If Steroid Blastoma Recurrence After Breast Conjunctive Surgery for Dr. Carcinoma in situ. TCIS is a non-invasive coronary proliferation of malignant f cells. Instance of if lateral breast tumor recurrence after breast conjunctive surgery is approximately 10 to 15 percent. TCIS recurrence may indicate a more aggressive subtype compared with non-recurrence. Nowadays, we focus on low-risk TCIS. In ongoing surveillance trials, the low-risk DCIS do not undergo surgery. Instead, follow-up mammography are performed to monitor recurrence. In this context, information regarding DCIS recurrence becomes increasingly important. Several IVTR prediction models, such as fine risk prognostic index, MS cases nomogram, and oncotype DS, have been introduced in the field. These models only use clinical pathologic information but do not use imaging data. Therefore, we investigated to develop a nomogram that integrates clinical pathology and imaging variables to predict IVTR in women with DCIS treated with BCS. The development cohort consisted of patients with surgery at Seoul National University Hospital between 2003 and 2016. The validation cohort included patients with surgery at the National Cancer Center between 2005 and 2013. Exclusion criteria consisted of unavailable imaging, bilateral breast cancer, and insufficient follow-up. The following clinical and pathological data were obtained from EMR. Clinical data included age, menopausal status, family history, initial presentation, and aspirin radiation and endocrine therapy. Pathological data included nuclear grade, gomitonecrosis, number of exigens, resection margin, disease size, and estrogen and progesterone receptor status. The following mammography and ultrasound characteristics were retrospectively analyzed, including detection modality, breast density, mammography patterns, morphology, and distribution of calcifications, and ultrasound patterns. Our mammogram was developed to estimate the tenure probability of IVTR using the, using the development cohort. Univariable and multivariable Cook's proportional hazard regression analysis were used to identify factors independently associated with IVTR. These factors were incorporated into the nomogram. Our nomogram was evaluated in an external validation cohort. Discrimination performance was evaluated using 10-year AURC, and calibration performance was evaluated using a calibration curve. Our nomogram was finally compared with the MSKCC nomogram, which uses 10 clinical and pathological factors published in JCO 2010. In our results, Development cohort consisted of 702 women with an IVTR rate of 4%. Validation cohort included 182 women with an IVTR rate of 10%. In the multivariable Cook's analysis, the following variables were associated with IVTR. Age under 40 years, gross or positive resection margin, known use of aspirin radiation survey, and extremely dense breast tissue. Regarding morphology of calcifications, amorphous calcifications were associated with a decreased risk, whereas fine linear branching calcifications were associated with an increased risk. 
our nomogram was created based on the aforementioned variables. A 100 point was determined as a cutoff to divide low and high risk. Our nomogram demonstrated good discrimination and calibration performance in the astronaut validation cohort. AUROC was 0.73, which was higher than that of the MSKC nomogram, albeit with a statistical significance. Our nomogram requires fewer numbers of variables, 5 versus 10, making it potentially easier to use and more practical in clinical settings. I will introduce two representative cases. In the first case, the mammography shows heterogeneous dense breast and biosuproven CIS shows amorphous calcifications in the right upper breast. She was uh, 66 years old, the surgical margin was negative, and the patient underwent aspirin radiation therapy. She had zero points on the nomogram, suggesting low risk. Indeed, no recurrence was developed during follow-up. In the second case, mammography shows extremely dense breast and fine pregnophic calcifications in the right inner breast. She was 42 years old, had close resection margin, and underwent aspirin radiation therapy. On the nomogram, she had 100 body points, suggesting a high risk. The patient experienced recurrence two times. The first recurrence occurred two years after the initial surgery, presenting as fine linear branch calcifications near the oxygen site. After four years following the second surgery, recurrence occurred again, presenting as fine linear branch calcifications in the right outer and subareolar breast. Our study had limitations. The most significant one was the composition of the astronaut validation cohort, which originated from a single institution and had a small sample size. Furthermore, multiple characteristics differed from the development cohort. Therefore, our nomogram should be validated using larger sample sizes from multiple institutions. Additionally, we did not analyze MRI features because preoperative MRI was not routinely performed for DCIS. In conclusion, our nomogram for predicting IBTR probabilities provides individualized risk estimates for women with DCIS treated with PCS. This nomogram demonstrates a comparable discriminative ability to the MSKC nomogram despite its simple advantages. Thank you.